Welcome to another Landscape Lenscast podcast. So we're here with the usual subs- suspects. Uh, we have Steve Stain on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side we have uh, Doug uh, Millen, of course. So what I always do is ask what they've been up to, and then we'll go to our guests for this evening. So uh, Steve, could you tell more about what you've been up to this week, or last week? Um, Same week. I've, I've not done a lot. I've done a... I've done a workshop last week. Uh, I've got one Friday again up uh, Can It Chase. Photography wise, not. Oh, we went, we went and done a little um, scout locally in Leicestershire. Uh, Sunday got soaking wet. Found some oh. nice, interesting trees though. So uh, we'll be returning there. But that's about it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Not too much. No worries. Not nothing much happens in the week, I suppose, with those all. You know, if it's something, we should really do these once a week things where. Maybe leave it a month and we'll see what you've yeah, been up yeah. to this month. Yeah. <laughs> um, Doug, what have you been up to this uh, week? <laughs> uh, well, I was out uh, doing walking from my book the other day at Balgoni Woods in Fife near Dunfermline. I uh, got a few mm-hmm. photos there, but I'm not particularly happy with them. They're a bit rubbish. They're a bit rubbish. So really? I'll be going back there sometime trying again. And what was the problem with it? Was it light? Was it the uh, just, just light? Yeah, I mean, I was there the wrong time of day, basically, as much as anything. You know, obviously, when I'm doing these walks, I do them in the middle of the day, and the light's terrible. Yeah. So I'll go back sometime when the light's better. I think it was a bit wet as well, as I recall. So. Yep, that's Scotland for you. That's yeah. what we get. <laughs> all wet. Uh, and I'm, I'm all not wet, a wet. photographer either, so, uh, you know, but I need, need to have a woodland picture, so do my best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Should watch your videos more, you know. Sorry, should watch your videos more for hints. Oh no, uh, that was the last one I done was quite dreek actually. It was raining and misty. Also, it was nice conditions, but I felt a bit rushed. Uh, I'll yeah. talk about it a bit later, guys. Not being <laughs> an artistic or anything there. Um, so, uh, get on to the main point, and we've got two uh, guests tonight, guest panelists, and the first panelist is from Australia, and I, I will say that um, thank you course uh, david for joining us we know you've been come all the way from a, not come all the way but you're zooming all the way if i put it that way if that's um if that's any kind of word uh from australia and it is now half past six in the morning or seven o'clock yeah. i think is that correct well no way to seven o'clock yeah, it's uh it's uh 6 50 yeah. is it uh, wow. six, not on 6 30 sorry i've got okay, my wrong well, glasses on when i've got to get back close to the screen <laughs> okay, so uh, David, uh, thank you. Know we'll get back to you, of course, and talk about for your images. Uh, so I'm just going to introduce no uh, Sue. So Sue, thanks again uh, coming on and giving us your time uh, to the podcast. And uh, Sue, of course, is from Jersey from the Channel Islands. Uh, Sue, how are you today? I'm very well. Thanks very much for the invite. Uh, pleasure, of course. Uh, so now once we've actually we've actually introduced everyone now, so we're just going to have a little chat amongst each other. And then what we do is introduce Sue and, of course, David's images, and we'll talk through the rest of the images through the rest of the night. Uh, so, first and foremost, guys, um, what's been happening this week? Well, of course, this week I've got had a first video I put out since December, and it was kind of a bit mediocre, let's say. But, um, yeah, um, so it feels a bit weird. Now, the point I'm getting to is when you've not been shooting for a while, maybe for a month or two, what kind of things infu- what what kind of things get you uh, motivated to help your catalyst kids get a catalyst to get you going again and shooting again? What kind of things get you motivated? And we'll mix it up and we'll start with Sue. <laughs> right in the deep end. Um, yeah. that's a tricky one, that one. Um I never usually go as long as months without shooting. Um I haven't been out for about a week and I do find it difficult to guess I really just have to leave the house and I'm going to go X to an X place and I might have an idea of what I'm going to do depending on the weather conditions. Um, but then uh, I just do tend to follow my nose at the end of the day. For example, the, last week we had a couple of really nice days and I went down to um, my local beach, which was about five minutes away, mm-hmm. with just the intention of doing some maybe some ICM or some multiple exposures. And I ended up taking photographs of... Um, a modern building <laughs> so there you go <laughs> i just well, bit, yeah. i just wanted to Definitely. do something abstract i saw it the, the sun was out bright so it just sort of actually worked quite well so yeah. that's what I yeah, exactly that's, that's the just thing. I mean, 
yeah, you do something different. It's always gets it gets the gets the creativity flowing in it. Uh, Doug, what about you? Is what what gets you create? What gets your creative juices going when you've had about maybe a week or two or a month, or whatever? Not shooting. What do you? What gets you going? Well, the thing is, I tend to have because I'm doing my books. I keep bringing this up. I write books. I've got a shopping list yeah. of, uh, <laughs> of, of photographs that I want to take. You know, so yeah. um, if the weather's right for the particular uh, shot that I want to take, that's when I'll go out. So it's um, very much weather dependent and time dependent. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Of course, yeah. of course. Just, I think what I'm touching on is mainly there's times where we feel really uh, just kind of withdrawn, and we you we mean normally when you've lost your I mean, mojo we, for a bit. Sorry. When you've lost your mojo for a bit. Well, you lost your mojo. That's a good point. Yeah. So when you lost your mojo, you've kind of, you've been shooting for me for about six months in a row, doing, I've been, been on trips, whatever, doing workshops, or whatever you're doing. And then you, you have that kind of point where, let's say, that normally happens in mid sort of summer for me when it's, everything's pretty much the same. It's all blue skies and yeah, it's just boring. It's all landscape mm -hmm. photographer. Everyone has their bits, they have their kind of dips and falls. And I don't know about what well, you, Steve. Do you think that when you're actually getting to that point where you feel like you've been shooting and you think it's nothing is inspiring me, but I'm, I can't get out because of such and such, and I've got things to do, and you're chasing your tail? What inspires you just to, if you can't do one thing and can't get out to that area, what would you do? I, uh, is... I, I just, I still try and get out, to be honest. It's this, I think this time of your year, talking to all other photographers it's a real struggle to just get motivated certainly uk wise i don't know what it's like in australia with the, the summer and that but in, this time of year in the winter yeah and the weather we've had everybody sort of is really low in their photography mind but the yes. way i cope is is actually to get out no matter what um and just keep going and and yeah. that's that's what i find out's made through it because whether I get a good image or not, you've still, like, like I said earlier, we've, we've scouted new areas. We're still trying different things. And it always gives you an idea to return in, on another day. So, yeah. And it gives me something to do when I come back as well, whether that's editing a video and things like that. I mean, I've got a couple of videos that they've not got great images in, but it, it's it's still worth putting out there because it's not yeah. a perfect world, is it? So um, It's a story, isn't it? It's your story. Yeah, it's still a story. But I, I think, like I say, I think a lot of people struggle this time of year. I think as soon yeah. as we start seeing the the um, the spring starting to show its face, which it's just started. I mean, the weather oh, yeah. it feels <laughs> like spring anyway. But um, Yeah, I love that. I love that time of year. Yeah. yeah. We only need a few good days and then everybody will be feeling good again, I think. Yeah. What about you, David? Uh, have you ever felt you lost your mojo, as um, as Doug said, and you're looking to maybe ignite your passion for photography? Is it any time you felt that way? I think you you're not human if you don't. Every now and then, you can you can get a bit burnt out. Something else in your life has triggered something. Um, I find that if I um, sit down in an evening and uh, just check out. Uh, YouTube subscribers yeah. that things popped up and uh, that usually cheers you up and uh, gets you motivated, gets you thinking again. Mm -hmm. um, so I find that helps. Um, it's uh, summer here and uh, in inland uh, Victoria, we've got no sea breezes and uh, we get um, a hot wind that comes from the north, um, even coming from the west. Um, so summer can be very hot which you can yeah. say oh, i'm not going out in this it's over you know mm -hmm. getting close to 40 degrees yeah um so but then that's when you're going to get your beautiful sunsets uh and it's a yeah, bit cooler you know? cool. so uh you know yeah Brilliant. Well, well, um, sorry so, I mean, one... yeah go on sorry go on sorry go on yeah um Ted Forbes is a person who motivates me when he starts to share everybody's magazines and zines that they've sent him, uh -huh. um, and uh, it gets you gets your um, your grey matter juices flowing. You know, think gives you ideas. Um, like I'm thinking, I'm up early this morning, 
um, and the sun's going to be low, I'm just going to go for a five minute, 10 minute walk down to our yeah. local lake yeah. and, and see what uh, dragonflies might be flitting around and have a go. Nice. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's, I might have a go at that this morning, actually. Yeah. And it's two aspects, it's two different, you can differentiate, of course, the Australia and UK with the weather just now, as uh, Steve said, it's as it's, it's, we've got rain just now all the time, almost. Wind and, and rain, it's very... horrible. Sorry? The wind and rain, it's horrible. The wind and rain, yeah. That's it's just, um, horizontal yeah. Wind. Hard to get enthusiastic about anything when that's happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as Steve says, it's, it get all, you know, just force yourself out sometimes. I've done that before where, the, like last Sunday, uh, no, it was a week on Sunday, I, I recorded that video and I just forced myself out to go and uh, got in the car, started driving, didn't think about going home. You know, I, I kept all the dogs at bay and as soon as I got out there, I was motivated. And I think that's it. You've just got to go out there and do it. Uh, try to, you know, shake off these uh, negative thoughts, etc. And as you, kind of Steve put a good point there is just just get out when you can. You know, just try to get out as much as you can, and it's uh, it's I practice, think, practice, um, practice as well. I, I think another good thing is is another good idea is try different things. Try mm -hmm. macro. Does you know try street? Try anything? You know, just to yeah. keep you know that um, creativity side of it. You go in a little bit. Um, yeah. I mean, you can shoot any any time. You know, the weather doesn't have to be can be good, bad, or whatever in street photography. Exactly. Yes, yeah, of course. I mean, um, in lockdown, I think uh, Mark Rose was pretty much the, uh, the top genre of photography everyone's doing on YouTube channels, etc. Yeah. <laughs> Who bought a macro lens during lockdown? I did, yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. Uh, hmm. So it's just because we couldn't do much. So we were actually in our house and we were photographing plants and things. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah, there's, there's always something to photograph, let's face it, isn't there? So, guys, well, yep. uh, let's uh, get into the business side of the uh, podcast and let's go to the images. It's that time, guys. It's that time. It's time for that part of the show on Landscape Lenscast Podcast, where we all take a look at the images for this week from present and past. Okay, right, okay, that's the cheese over with. Now we're going to go to this week's images, guys. So thanks again, Doug, for uh, sharing your images. And the first one, of course, looks quite interesting, quite intriguing. Uh, tell us more about this image. Yeah, this is um, up on the, the, the shores of Loch Lomond, uh, just north of Inversnade. And what you've got here is actually um, the ruins of an old house or shielding, possibly, um, a village called, I think it was Claddy Beg, something like that. Um, oh, yeah. Aye, so just as I say, just north of Inversnade, shores of Uh So the wall we're looking at here is the wall of the shilling with the tree. It's grown in the top of it. Now, this was actually, it was an old clearance village, um, this thing, and where a lot of the clearances were cleared for sheep up on Loch Lomond. They were actually cleared for oak trees, mm -hmm. which uh, they used the bark for um, tanning leather, I think it was. Yeah, and, tan, and, and tanning, obviously, tanning. for uh, powering the Industrial Revolution. It was all shut down to Glasgow. Anyway, yes, yeah, so they, they, they cleared all the tenants and planted these trees. This is one of these trees, and it's actually growing through the domains of the house. Mm. Which, uh, I quite like. Very interesting. Uh, Steve, uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's it's interesting to hear the backstory of it. Actually, isn't it? Is this in is this in in one of your books, Doug? It's not actually no. Oh, right, it was just a day oh, I was out, out of Loughlin and just taking pictures for the hell of taking. Right, right, because I'd be interested to actually know more about that backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it really intrigues. Uh, you see a lot of this in Wales as well, and this image could be almost. Um, like Paddley Gorge as well, where you see these old gnarly trees and that. And, yeah. and I've seen a lot of images where the, certainly in Wales where I've been, where the, um, these abandoned buildings and the, and just nature just takes back over and I find it extremely interesting. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's nice to hear that backstory on the image. Yeah, it's a lovely shot. Thanks, Doug. And we'll go to your next shot there. Yeah. Uh, which is it all? 
one that I quite liked as well. I love the uh, the landscape, just the landscape itself. It's it's um, beautiful with regards to the trees, the free bony bony trees as I call them. <laughs> um, yeah, so Doug, yeah, just to uh, introduce this image. Yeah, where is it, for example? This here is uh, well, the hill is Dumgoyne, which is mm. uh, just at the kind of southern edge of the Campsie Fells. Um, and it's on the West Highland Way. So this picture was actually taken from the West Highland Way. Yeah. Um, and it was taken one evening. I think it was a February or March, maybe even April. Um, mm -hmm. And I stopped off. I had wanted to get the sun catching the mountain. And uh, I could see it. But I bumped into this guy as I was walking down. And he just yacked and yacked and yacked and yacked. I could not get away. So by the time I got down there, the sun was gone. And it was kind of getting in for twilight. So uh, this is the shot that I got. And it's actually, I think, probably better than getting the side illumination on the hill, you know, yeah, at nice. the end of the day. So, David, what's your take on it? Yeah, I like the subdued uh, colours that you've you've got in the uh, in the ground uh, part of the image, including the hills. So have you um, dulled any of those colours down, Doug, a bit from what it would look like? Like, a, would that be a possibly a brighter green on the hill? Uh, no, not really. Not really? Um, okay. Our hills are fairly fairly dull green to start with. They're not that bright. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like the way that the uh, two smaller trees uh, are, are just kissing. Uh, they have separation, but they're just kissing the mother tree, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I like how that works. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I can see that as well. Separation's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's the first set of images. And um, we'll go to the second. Um, Steve, mm. tell us. Yeah, Steve, can you tell us more about the shot and uh you know what the conditions were like, etc. Yeah, it's um we had a, a meetup from our Facebook group. Um one of the admin Colin, he he, he shoots this area regular. They were desperate to get us down on the, the Devon coast. And um, so we all decided to have a, a meet up down there. This, if I remember right, this was shot actually in the afternoon um, as mm -hmm. the sun started to to drop. The um, the wave formation is a, is a blend of about three images, if I remember right as well. Uh, and what I, what I like about this area um, is obviously is that that rock formation that rock formation is about it's about eight foot high as well so it's it's quite a, a dominant thing in the scene but what i like about this bay is is actually the color of the sand how, how contrasty it is because it is like a dark silvery color sand yeah um and it can make for some super long exposure photography as well so um you know where you get that the waves where they draw back and you get that I don't know about a fifth of a second, and and get the the bubbles as they recede back into the water there. So it's yeah. it's, it's quite a nice location to shoot, to be honest. Yeah, and um, what the colours as well, very minute colours. It's um, it makes yeah, image. Yeah, yeah. More. I've sort of softened the colours a little bit, trying to try and enhance the. Um, we didn't get a lot of golden light, but we just sort of got a little pocket of it come through. Uh, only what five or ten minutes. So, and what I wanted was, is if you have a look on the rock, it's just reflecting off the rock as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So we nice. just we had to work quick. Let's say. Yeah, I can imagine, especially trying to uh, get the camera set up, etc., and get obviously getting your composition and and this hopefully the you know the, the, the it works well with regards to the amount of um, movement in the water, etc. Imagine how yeah. hard that can be. Uh, yeah. Sue, what's your take on that? Because I know you do a lot of uh, seascape, uh, you know, waves, etc. What's your take on this image? Yeah, I think this uh, image is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's it really speaks to me because I love the muted colours, as you um, spoke about earlier. Um, it's really soft, and then you've got this lovely shard of rock, which is hard. Um, you know, just pointing up, giving a lovely texturally textured contrast I think it's really 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 effective yeah. and I love the way that the um, horizons just sort of fades in, into mistiness so you're not dividing the picture into sections it just all sort of blends together beautifully I think it's I don't know how close you were to the sea it looks like you might have got your feet wet <laughs> I, 
Uh, uh, well, the video's out this week. You'll, if you watch it, you'll find out. But I do. <laughs> we all get wet, to be honest with you. Yeah, we all get true. wet. <laughs> but I, I, really, I really do like this image. I think it's lovely, Steve. Really do. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. It was quite a big surf, to be honest, or a big swell. Like I say, because, like, that rock is at least eight foot tall, so you can imagine the surf that's wrapping around it. Yeah. And it, it, every now and again, every... Um, five, six, seven waves, you'd get this, a couple of massive waves that just come right in over, up to your knees sort of thing. Um, so I was running back with a tripod, running back in, doing all this stuff, because I'd only got my boots on, but you just got to accept you're going to get wet. It's just one of them things. Yeah, it's good fun, beautiful though. image, Steve. So yeah. we'll go to the next okay. one. And this one, uh, uh, Steve, Steve, tell, tell us more, more about, about this shot. shot. This is my low tree that I shoot. Yeah. I shoot. I haven't shot it for about a, about a year, but um, I've sort of got a little project going where if I can't get out and travel too far, I'll go to an, an area like this and shoot it. I turned up that morning, not expecting to see this. It's just a big puddle in the in the field um, yeah. with these lovely air bubbles in. So uh, got there for sunrise as well. I really went there for a, a sunrise hoping that I'd get a little bit of light. And obviously we've got this beautiful pinks and purples in the sky. Yeah, and and the, the sun rises actually from the sort of 90 degrees from the right-hand side. And sometimes that light doesn't reach over to the tree. Mm -hmm. But luckily mm -hmm. this morning it did. So, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a fabulous hour there. Great. Brilliant. Uh, Doug, what's, what's your take on us? That's lovely. Lovely colours. I did watch you doing it in your video, Steve, to be fair, so... I know a lot of the background already. Have you got, um, like, is there a slight highlight around the tree? Have you done a radio filter or something there? Because it looks a lot slightly brighter. Um, I think I did brighten it up just slightly with a radio filter. What I'll do, if I do a radio filter, I'll then um, uh, do a local, local radio filter, mm. drop the exposure, but I'll also deselect... Um, well, I deselected the tree, so it only affects the background. Just to really try and bring the tree out a little bit more, to be honest. Yeah. If anything, yeah, it was a little bit more pinky and purpley beyond that tree. Yeah. Um, just to make it pop a little bit. The foreground's stunning. It's just uh, leading you yeah. right up. It was, it was focus stacked as well. Focused. Yeah, yeah, because I remember watching your video, um, and of course, the, the stacking, because it was like, obviously, you're... The three points of stacking, is it? Or just two points? Um, well, I think it's about four or five just to make oh, okay. sure I got it all in. So I, I yeah. literally focused on the, the foreground two bubbles, mm -hmm. the, the main bubble, if you like, then the next bubble along, and, and then yeah. the end of the, the water there, and then the, the tree in the background. So it was quite yeah, a bit of a... Just uh, probably didn't really need them, but it, it would just really to edge my bets, to be honest. Yeah, I do that as well because it's self insurance and it gives a you know, you always like overdo it just in case uh, you don't get the image you want or yeah. something's yeah. lacking in sharpness, uh, you want it back to the front and certainly you've got in this. Really yeah, and sure. I'll also I'll shoot regular as well, so I'll keep shooting, um, and then obviously just wait for that line, but keep shooting that same sort of composition keep focus stacking so i've probably got about six or seven focus stacked images of the same composition yeah and then just put the best ones really and guys watching uh have a look at steve's video on this youtube i mean when the times comes out it'll be on friday it'll be the last one he'd done from last week and uh you will see him setting up the camera trying to get this composition and he does do it very well and there's also a bit of um hmm, at the beginning of the <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk the about... <laughs> beginning of the video there is yeah well yeah we'll talk about it a bit I suppose yeah uh, so you probably heard me laughing when we were talking about steve's uh, image and it's not because of the image it's because of uh, steve's introduction that's all i'll say don't want to spoil the surprise uh but yeah you'll like it entertaining <laughs> so... <laughs> a little bit of fun i was trying to have a absolutely uh and sue and david sitting there and they'll probably think, what the hell have we joined? <laughs> yeah, so, no, I've, I've you made my mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, yes, just encourage people to watch it. They'll enjoy uh, it. So, absolutely, of course. And uh, it made my day, actually. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, so
Lovely images. Now, of course, uh, just an introduction to this one. Sue does uh, a lot of uh, sea images, uh, waves, etc. And uh, based on illustrations of the Japanese wave, which we will reference in a minute, uh, which I'll get their name right. <laughs> so out to the sea, we'll start off with this one. This is a belter. I love it, as we see in Scotland. Uh, here we go. Yeah, very simple shot. Sue, can you tell us more about this image? And you know, yeah, it's. Um, I used to do a lot of um, uh, long exposures, um, and this was probably my favourite one that I ever took. Took, as I said, a lot. But this one, I just like the muted colours on it. Mm. Um, these um, groins that you see in the middle of the shot um, only uncover every now and then, and this was taken a little while ago. Um, when the storm and these um, groins came through, and yeah. they were there's a runoff from a pond which would have been behind me, uh, which uh, goes out to sea, and just by pure luck that it was going down through the groins and the water. You could follow the water down <clears throat> with a long exposure, mm -hmm. um, and I just love the silvery grey to it. It's that lovely um, bluey colour. It yeah. just, I just really liked it. Didn't really have to do a lot to the picture to process it, really. It came, it came out as I liked it to, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's nice. I love the leading uh, line of it going right down to the sea. Mm. And um, Steve, um, just uh, what's your take on this beautiful image? It, it just, just shows you that you don't need super colourful sunrises and sunsets to get a fabulous image and i think you've yeah. captured it perfectly what what was the shutter speed on this good question remember? yeah um that was uh three minutes three minutes yeah yeah I mean, of course as you as you probably know steve it's quite difficult because um the sand's soft and if you've got three minutes the times that you end up with a sort of blurred image because your tripod's sinking gradually into the sand and um, I probably got about five or six shots which mm -hmm. didn't work on this because you end up with this not quite sharp image yep. because of soggy wet sand. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Heaton has a trick with that. He puts um, old CDs underneath the oh, yeah. tripod. <laughs> what? That, what a good idea. That <laughs> works, <Discotech. apparently>, so. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. That was one of his earlier videos. It's way yeah. back, isn't it? Yeah. It just yeah. reminded me of it just there when you said. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've learned to really jam it into the sand, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I probably didn't need three minutes to be quite honest. Looking at it now, um, maybe it was for the sky. I took three minutes mm. because you yeah. know there's not a lot of action elsewhere that you want to smooth it out. The, the stream going down is actually quite smooth anyway. So I probably yeah. wouldn't have needed, but it, I've got my notes, and it was three minutes. Nice, that's a lovely shot. Uh, it's a good uh, opening shot as well to start off the images uh, from Sue. So we go to the next one, and guys, we'll all put these images up in the group uh, for you to see again uh, with permission from the guys on the show, of course. Uh, this one here is engulfed. Uh, we love this one, and it's just mainly all drama and monochrome shot. And beautiful. So, um, yeah, just going to the the image itself there, Sue. Just tell us more about the conditions, what you shot, at, etc. Yes, this was one of the big storms um, last year. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been Eunice. I'm not too sure. Hmm. But um, there was a huge swell at the same time and um, an onshore wind. So the the swell was coming in and hitting, as you can see, the wall in front of the um, the little. Uh, fisherman's hut yeah. and it would just bounce and it just shot up into the air it was it was fantastic to see and to shoot as well um and sometimes uh in these conditions um th the wave that you see there will recede and hit the one coming in and you have this mm -hmm. great spume of water coming up so it's all it's pretty spectacular and i love yes. that white house because it gives some sort of scale to it yeah, yeah, and just the white, the whiteness of the uh, the contrast of the image for the white and black, a little mm -hmm. bit of darkness. Mm -hmm. um, Doug, what's your take on this one? Well, I have to you ask, so where, where were you actually standing? I mean, was it safe? <laughs> 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 that wall um, actually follows um, the line of the bay round, and mm -hmm. because I had a long lens, it sort of foreshortened everything, and I was sheltered behind um, a big um, uh, German-built emplacement. 
uh, well, part of the wall which would protect their um, ammunitions and things. I'm not too sure of the history of it, but this was in the, uh, the German occupation of the island uh, between 1940 and 1945. And we have a lot of sea defences which now remain, and they're quite good to hide behind when you're photographing in these conditions. Yes. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. Is, is, is the roof of the house white as well, or has that just been rendered that way in the, the model image? It's um it's owned by the National Trust and they paint they painted it green one year mm -hmm. uh, to try and be eco and everybody went absolutely bonkers and so they repainted it white again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was white when it was built about two hundred years ago, but oh, no. it's white now. It's used <laughs> as a navigation point as well, I think, because um, it stands okay. out quite well. Yeah, right. I put it in the black and white because um, it just I thought it was better because the the background's green. And the sea was sort of blue, and I just thought there was too much colour going on, which mm -hmm. detracted yeah. from the wave. Yeah, and it does do that. Uh, black and white simplifies an image and mm -hmm. it gives it drama. It certainly, need that. That's the kind of image that does need that as well. It's beautiful. So yeah, I was uh, enjoying these images. We'll go to the next one, and this one is rising up, crashing. Yes, yeah, it's a beautiful one as well. It's just uh, very dramatic as well. And uh, I love the texture in this image. Uh, so yeah, just uh, introduce this image and tell us more about. Yeah, this one was taken in um, Nazare, uh, Portugal, mm. west coast of Portugal, which is sort of famed for its big, big waves. Um, yeah. This was taken in a bay around the, the corner from where the, all the action actually happens, where the the surfers, um, you know, really by these great walls walls of yeah. waves so just it's just incredible and the time I went down was very lucky to get um you know just to get the big swells coming in during November and uh, I just loved it I just stood, I stood on the beach for hours and on the cliff top for hours just taking photographs this one was taken quite early in the morning just by my hotel just as the sun was coming up and it was just um catching the face of the waves and I shoot um, to try and get this, um, rather than being impressionistic on the waves, mm. and it, I do slow the camera speed down, but um, not enough to lose that um, uh, stripy detail. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You were talking about um, the great wave of, Ka 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 I can't say it either, Ka Kanagawa by, yes, I, Hokusai, yeah. by Hokusai. And um, it's sort of like, it's trying to bring out this sort of character in the wave. I obviously mm -hmm. haven't got it like these Japanese prints, but that's where, you know, I'm trying to get the expression of the wave. That's what I'm trying yeah. to do. Yeah, certainly got that in it. Um, David, what's your take on that? I mean, what, what do you think yeah, about uh, the actual, the, you know, obviously the contrast in it itself? Yeah, the well, the, the contrast is is really nice. What colour would the, would the sea be in, in colour, Sue? It was actually um, pale blue. Um, okay yeah and so it, then yeah. The, if, if, if it was aqua you might have left it color but uh i have got it in color actually which i yeah uh, i like it equally as well which is unusual yeah this would be more striking in black and white because of the contrast mm. so, um and that's the drama that you've got i really like the way that uh you're taken through this image is you come from left to right you're sweeped up and then and then you're sweeped to the right uh and so you get you get to uh, take a while to uh, view the image just because of the way the curves are working, and the middle left side with that arc of uh, of dark holds you in as well. So it's um, it's well composed, and so uh, that's why it's striking. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate much. that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. How and many and, shots uh, would you would you have in your folio, and then choose the best? Would you have like how many would you have taken that morning or evening, whenever it was? Ooh, I should imagine that was probably, it was in about an hour, about 150. Yeah, and then you've got uh, yeah. half a dozen I mean, that your best that your keepers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't sort of um, obviously sort of put them all out because there's similarity in them, but it takes yeah. quite a while to get timing right. Um, you know, exactly uh, the camera speed right. Um, so you you do take a while to get the feel, especially if it's if it's an area that you don't usually go to, because yeah, you don't yeah. know how quick the waves are coming in initially. Yeah, it is a bit of a it's kind of guesswork and trying to 
a bit using yeah. the course of the well art as well, like apps, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite interesting. We'll go to this next one, and this one is my favourite of, of all the uh, images you've given us to us. And I'll just get that up just now. It's Jade Curl. I think it's because because I've been looking at black and white. I think this one just strikes right out with that. It's the um, texture and for the the image and the color, also the jade color. And uh, yeah, just tell us more about this one. Um, this one no introduction. <laughs> <laughs> this one um, I took about four years ago, possibly yeah, about four years ago. I think five years ago, and mm -hmm. it kicked off my wave series of this look. Um, I turned up at the beach one day. It was very boring in my mind. I thought this just wasn't working. And then I remembered um, something somebody said to me about, if you're ever stuck on something to do, this harks back to what you were saying earlier, Paul, um, mm -hmm. just take out your camera with one lens and say one fixed length or yeah. you know something which you're not going to change and just go out and see what you can do with this particular setup. So that's exactly what I did. And I went out and I took um, I took my long lens and I thought, right, I'm gonna shoot within a range of say a quarter and a 10th of a second yeah. um, and see what comes up. And for the first 20 minutes, half an hour, nothing. And then um, this happened. And I thought, oh, wow, that's it. It's that sort of light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've all had it at some stage <laughs> and I just thought, yes that's what I want <laughs> and um, I've tried perfecting it ever since it's beautiful it is, it's mm -hmm. a work of art in itself Steve what's your uh, I know you, you like this one as well what's your take on this one I, I think it's, a, a, it's an absolutely super image for, for you to start off your wave campaign <laughs> um, it must have took a while to beat this. I'm sure it would, because this is fantastic. But I, I like how you've captured that, the movement, and you feel as if you've. I don't know where you've you, you've taken the image from, but you really feel as if you've you've standing neck eye in the sea taking the image. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I love the the fact as well. You, you the the waves are they being blown back as well. You can see that that spray going beyond. The texture, just just everything about it, the colour that 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 colour as as the the wave wraps around there, it's just a super super shot. You must be very proud of that. I am, I say, I, I am proud of that shot. I really do yeah. like it. Um, and the um, the uh, spray going back is there's a few things you have to wait for to get mm -hmm. um, conditions which are right. One of them is which really helps is an offshore breeze, which will hold the wave up to start with and also give you this lovely texture on the top of it of the spray blowing backwards um and sometimes you know a wave can be flattened by sort of like the wind coming over the hills and down but this these conditions were absolutely perfect for this but standing on the side of the beach you wouldn't have known that unless um until you've got the picture then you could replicate it going forward if that makes sense yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, have you got a so have you got a go-to setting where you start off from when you, you're doing your shooting the, the waves and things like that? And then yes, I, I, would gen the... I would generally start at about one eighth or a sixth of a second. Yeah. Um, especially this bay, which I go to a lot, and it doesn't vary uh, terribly on the speed of the wave. But if I go somewhere else, it can be different. Yeah. Mm. And also, you were saying about getting wet. This is quite a steep shelving beach. So, and you, if you listen, you can hear, like you were saying before, every six or seven waves, you get the big one or two big ones come in, the, the rogue ones come in. And if you listen, I have to listen because you're not really watching um, the one which is stacked out behind, which can be twice the size of the one that you're actually shooting. So you have to be tuned into the sound of the wave coming in and know yeah. that you might have to stand your ground or just leg it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. Just, uh, just tuning into the sound. Yeah. That's a really good point. So have you become a bit of an expert in waves over the years? And see? Oh, I know. But I know a lot more than I did when I started. <laughs> and I've had <laughs> I've had Wellington boots full of water and sort of like, you know, I've never actually fallen over yet, but that's mm. the, that will come. 
you for sure. <laughs> Whether it's an old fisherman's tile, um, <laughs> so he doesn't get wet when he's uh, chasing salmon. Uh, it, every seventh one is a rogue whale. Yeah. rogue wave um <laughs> and uh when you when you actually count it out you go oh yeah it's, that seems to be right you know so every seventh one <laughs> yeah yeah i was gonna say uh, yeah um so we um just looking at these images there just really get your uh creative juices going uh regards to get your inspiration and get over there with the camera i'm sure the guys watching this uh on the night they're watching it on friday uh, we'll enjoy these images and uh yeah as sue says just go out with one lens one camera and just go down and to even to the beach or even wherever you want to do and just try to focus on one thing and come back with a masterpiece like uh, jade curl beautiful shot yeah so so uh david thanks again for giving these images as well and i'm going to go to the first one i love this no because there's so much to look at it grows on you this image as you more you look at it uh so David, just tell us more about this. I know it's you've kind of talked to us before uh, tonight it's about okay. this image, but uh, tell us more about yeah, it. Yeah, uh, not far away up on the actual Murray River, which is the border between Victoria and New South Wales, is a little town called Waganya. And uh, you can walk on the New South Wales side along a, a bike path, which goes for oh, five or six kilometres, maybe longer, because mm -hmm. I haven't done it all. Um, and there's the the uh, red river gums, we call them, which are the uh, foreground trees here. Uh, and they actually require the flood from the river to uh, to stay alive um, yeah. to keep their roots wet and give them give them water. Um, so this is looking through the, the I'm standing on the path. No, mm -hmm. sorry, I've walked off the path into the scrubby grass make lots of noise to make sure the snakes go away mm. uh, and um, <laughs> and then looking through into the pasture land and then behind that there's some uh, there's some more trees which and what took my eye was that little tree in the middle with the way the uh, rising sun was catching the top of the tree uh, and giving some uh, backlight through the leaves on the right so that's what caught, and on the grass in the foreground. So that's what caught my eye. And I tried to turn chaos into a, a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like your guys' opinion on whether I should keep the left edge with uh, looking through with the uh, backlight coming through or take that out and just show the tree trunk. But I think it shows, as it is, I think it shows more of the space and more of the yeah. forget that tree is not huge. I think you still need to you see all of the trunk and, and that one breathing has, space yeah yeah it's, and that one yeah. has beautiful texture uh on the bark uh so um that's sort of i tried to frame it that way and the v-shape nice. on the right but went more to the right it would be more messy so uh -huh. and there's a bit of catch light on the right hand trunks which i think works so that's yeah. my take on the <laughs> on the photograph yeah so early in the morning uh, as you can tell by the low sun yeah yeah and it, it, as you mentioned about the left hand side there i, I like the because you can see the warmth through the, the gap as well it's, it's kind of just in tune with the whole image so it's not a, to have breathing room um you know from the the last focal point is always good because yes. you, you know it, it gives that space spacious kind of look it also makes the, the image a bit more uh it makes the eye kind of move about more uh, when you've got like something blocking the way there it just stops the eye from moving about so yeah even though you've got like a, a stop point in there you still got interest in the backlight coming from the, the left hand side of that, that gum tree um steve um what do you think yeah I'll, i think you need that little bit of um that little bit of separation on that that side as well i totally agree mm -hmm. so um okay thanks i think it's i think it's perfect to be honest I love the I love the little tree in the background. I love the other lights catching it from that side and giving that little bit of separation as well. And and then obviously you got that mist. But what what my eyes tended to do is then coming back out and looking at the bark and the textures in the bark as well, which are framing this tree. Um, it looks like it's painted. The, the bark looks like it's so it's very very. It's nice to hear that backstory again about it. The, the the river has to flood how many times mm. does the river flood to keep the a tree like that going then is it just a couple of times a year or is it quite uh, regular it, the water flow is controlled by a huge dam near just north in uh right. 
where I live, uh, the Hume Weir. Uh, so it is controlled, um, and it's uh, it's not doing the uh, mouth of the river in South Australia much good by controlling it. It need, needs more flow through into South Australia, but you could arg argue over that for centuries, which is happening. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it uh, they do let it do let it flood and they will let water out because uh they they know that uh, you know the the river gums living along the river will will die if they don't get that water so yeah, yeah. it's controlled but it allowed to happen and just the point is, as well is yeah. the branch above the tree um yeah. it stops the eye from moving up and out into the sky so it's containing the shot it's framing the tree in the middle so that's nice and you've got these branches pointing into the tree as well uh, first when I seen it, I thought maybe take them out, but no, because they actually point towards the tree, the branches. Uh, it's coming out from the both trees, both gum trees at the, the inner trees, if you can see that. Um, so I think it works well because it points towards the subject. And just, um, you, you're attracted to light with this, aren't you? The light in the background there, because you're also the low-lying mist there, morning, as you say. Uh, yeah. uh, see in the foreground there, David, uh, just if you look in between two the two immediate trees in the foreground there, is, is that bad briar or is that just merely just in the foreground um, in, in the mid-ground there's a fence uh show me with your cursor ah, that's, yeah, that yeah i just be, wonder what it was i don't know if it was like that would be a little bit of barbed wire um I can't really notice to be fair i haven't uh bothered to clone it out it's to me it's oh it's too small not to worry about but, uh, yeah um i have another image similar with um and i've definitely left it in because it's got a uh a cobweb which is catching the light and uh oh, yeah. it's 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 part of the photograph so nice. definitely the the uh, whether i took any yeah i might have uh no i haven't taken any of that out because if you look at the second tree on the left you can see yes. a little bit of the barbed wire down the base as well so yeah yeah um, things that keep once it you see it you see it so i might decide to go back and clone that out but no, no, I, I think I'll tell you why. Uh, it doesn't it bother works. me. It, it adds to the uh, adds to. The... It's it's it's, it's mainly the the actual fort, well the actual um, the land itself. You can see fences obviously in the background as well. That's right. So it kind yeah. of marries up with that, you know. Yeah. Um, it's not too bad. It's not. I don't think many many people. It's not intrusive in any way, is it? So, no, it's not intrusive, intrusive or anything. No, definitely not. Uh, oh, I, I just want to point out. Just... I, I I spotted that, and I was just about to to say it. <laughs> It's one of these images where you keep <laughs> going round, going round and having a look, and and that little bit of light catching that barbed wire. It, when I first seen this, I thought I'd remove that, but the, I've changed my mind after looking at it. And I, I I think it works keeping it in, and I like uh -huh. it just because that yeah. little bit of light's catching it. To be yeah, honest, yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and I think I, it's all yeah, I agree, Steve, and and I'll leave it there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree as well. Yeah. In in that it actually helps. It's subtle, but it helps kind of frame it. It does. You know yeah. what I mean? You've got your branch across the top, it, yeah. and the mirror is a branch at the top, yeah. down the bottom. I think it looks better because it's kissing a bit. Lights, bit kissing a part of it, yes. not the whole of it. So yeah. you can just it gives you a bit of depth to the image. So mm. it's not like yeah. all completely highlighted. It's just a little bit at the front there. It's uh, got some light on it. Yeah, that's a nice image. Yeah, so we'll go to the next one. And yeah, so staying with the woodland. Uh, I've got freedom. Yeah. <laughs> You never say that word in Scotland. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, that's a sore point. So, yeah, it's just a beautiful image. I, I think what I like about this image is the contrast, the tree um, in, the, in the foreground there, just uh, reaching out to the light. So, David, tell us more about your thought, thought process with this image. Okay. Um, this image was taken in a township about an hour and a half's drive uh, called Bright. Um, and uh, there is a lot of uh, European... Uh, deciduous trees in the town and uh, every autumn it's people flock to it just for the color mm. um and this is uh in um october here so try and reverse that you guys it's um spring here um and it's uh you guys can probably tell me what sort of tree it is um i don't know you might not be seeing enough of the bark uh, but i was sitting on a uh, on a bench with a small uh creek running through very peaceful, um, but mm -hmm. behind is um, a, a, an auditorium. I was at a festival called the Bright Festival of Photography, and we'll shorten, shorten that to BFOP, and about uh, four to 500 uh, keen photographers of all 
levels uh amateurs and professionals get together for a, a weekend of photography um with a, uh, at least uh, 30 uh professionals giving workshops it's a yeah. fantastic weekend and i was just having a break in between sessions having my lunch and i looked up and uh i saw that and um i carry around with me on a on my belt a little uh, olympus point and shoot it shoots in raw mm -hmm. and i don't use it enough and i just find a semi-automatic setting that will work and so i've fiddled with the dials and and took this shot um practically straight into the sun as you as you can tell um but i made sure that i could uh, retrieve the highlights in post uh -huh. because you, you can just see some of the leaves there you know, as you know i haven't lost them no. um and i've printed it and it comes out reasonably okay in print um mm -hmm. and i've put it into a, a local uh, when i say local a national competition um okay. and uh, i'll see how it goes uh when i get some when i get the scores back um so i i really like the left hand to right hand going from dark to light and and uh, what does annoy me a little bit is you can see that uh, that branch going to the right has been sawn off yeah. um, i much prefer it to feather out to its natural point but it doesn't do that so you you take it as it comes when things like that happen it's uh, yeah. the shot itself is uh, overweighs that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's I about mean, it's, it so it's almost like a you know a veteran in war you know lost his hand or something yeah or looking for <laughs> yeah. you know fighting striving for freedom um away from of course uh you know the people who actually fell in the trees you could see um but yeah it's a lovely shot and i think yeah i mean sue what's your take on it i th i agree i think it is a really lovely shot um it's got a very um ethereal look to it um mm. the way that sun is shining through it comes down to the sort of um where the branch meets the trunk you know it really shines it's, it's picking up um uh part of the leaves as well underneath the um horizontal branch there's um it's just catching light on the leaves it almost looks blossom like if that makes yeah. sense um the the truncated part of the branch branch doesn't bother me at all i hadn't noticed it to be quite honest until you mentioned it um, i don't think it makes any difference to the image at all whether that would have finished or not um i just I just I think it, I just keep looking around it all the time with the branches and I think it might just be an oak I don't know There's I was just, thinking yeah. that as well the shape of the leaves is kind yeah. of yeah. that's the only thing you can identify is the leaves because like yeah yeah no I, no I really like that image I think it's really really beautiful yeah and uh David of course um what I like about it as well you've went for the uh you've broke a bit of rules but you've you're not in a way because you've kind of exposed for the highlights and looking at the trees you've you can't help when you, if you're shooting into the sun you do lose a bit of detail that's that's just a fact that's something you can't you never get yeah. back <laughs> but that's what right. you've done is you've made that point of it and it's worked um, because it, the the whole story is there in, in yeah the i try to get the feeling that it was giving giving me uh, i tried to try and maintain that in in the image mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in, in it looks pretty good in color too because it's uh the backlight gets you get that bright green uh okay. with a dark green you know but uh because it's so contrasty i prefer the black and white i'll be interested to see it in color if you i'll be great if you could post it to the group um let's so yeah i'll see that that would be great i'll have a go that. at that yeah and well done hope you could do well in the competition as well um, yeah we'll yeah. see <laughs> good luck with that um mm. So, uh, we have pretty much looked at all the images, guys, already. Um, I think because this is the last one, I'll just get one more opinion of, well, of Doug and, of course, uh, Steve. What do you think of this image? I like it. I really like it. I like how all the branches are kind of all pointing in towards the sun. It's like they're all reaching towards the sun. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's quite a nice composition there. It's a lovely composition. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Did it look all right on on your histogram? Did you check the histogram at all when you were taking it? Or just yeah, just I, and, and I'm not a, a big fan of histogram. I, I sort of like to, my, I think my eyes uh, tell me whether it's, um, and also too, uh, in Lightroom with, uh, yeah, you, 
I'll have the um, the two little triangles um, to tell me if I've clipped blacks or whites. Mm -hmm. And in this sort of yeah. shot, when I'm uh, bringing the whites out back, um, I will get rid of every pixel of red. Sometimes I'll even blow it up and you can still see more pixels of red. Uh, and mm -hmm. so uh, I'll take them all out and then go back even a touch more because I know I'm going to print it. Um, yeah. And uh, so that's that's how I work work that. Same with the black. So I'll, if I'm going to print it, I'll take it one more back, uh, so yeah. you, you don't get watchy black printing. Um, so that's how I work it. So um, on, I would check the histogram in this instance because because of the highlights. And uh, mm -hmm. so if I just see it, it's off the edges, then it should be okay. That's yeah, that's how I. I mean there's that, that element, if you're doing a creative image like this, your creativity, you don't want nothing to get in your way of your creativity. And as long as you're technically got it okay, you don't really yeah. need to follow the rules as much. Because um, that's what we do when you try to be creative. We, we break you can rules. Try and, but, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I can break a rule, it's done for a reason. Exactly. Uh, beautiful mm -hmm. shot. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, so that is pretty much the images. I was going to uh, go back to the screen. So guys, this image uh, did take... And it was uh, about a week past Sunday, and it was in my local part, Woodland, where I actually learned a lot of doing woodland photography at the time. Uh, it was pretty much just when the lift was missed, and as you see, lift, the lift was missed, and it was pretty much at a time when the lift, the lift, it was at a time where the mist was starting to lift, as you see there in the foreground, it's, it's quite, it's more visible, and in the background, it's uh, kind of hazy at the back there. So, guys, any questions? Just, uh, yeah. I've got a question. Yeah, so go what, for it. Um, what uh, focal length would that be? Would do you, When you're in a woodland shooting mist, I tend to use a longer lens. Is that yes. what you do when you shoot it? That's a good question. I didn't, as the case. I used uh, my 24 to 70, and yeah. I went all in at 70. Yes. Uh, with this one. Yeah. Uh, because and I've it, done a panel. Just, yeah, it just seems to bring. Well, it obviously brings out that that mist and that fog a little bit more, doesn't it? And I assume yeah. that's why you went for the pan over then. Yeah, it's just because I had yeah. a, a smaller focal length. But yeah, yeah um, that's which is seventy mil. I usually do do seventy to two hundred uh, when I yeah. do Wheeland. Um, like you, Steve, I like to pick things out as well. I'll shoot mm -hmm. from a distance, mm -hmm. just to bring it the foreground. Uh, well, bring the background more into the frame as opposed to the foreground. Yeah. But yeah, you also. Yeah crop out that sky as well a little bit don't you boy using that yeah way. i mean i'm not overly concerned when it comes to sky when it comes to misty conditions or right. snowy conditions as i said but um yeah there, there's not too much of that in the way because the trees are actually going right up uh to the my frame where i want to so if it was a top of the trees and there's sky meeting the tree then that would be a no-no but yeah that's that's how i've done it that one there i think what you've you got there with the sky though is that up on the top left you've got this kind of triangle of sky if you like yeah i can mm -hmm. see that yeah and you've got yeah. your triangle of ground in the bottom right mirroring yeah. it yeah you know? yeah and i think that works that kind of mirroring between the two thank you and the, the one that the dead wood in the right hand side it looks like a nuclear waste we don't like this all kind of luminous green um the uh the, the wood itself of course the log there you can see on the right hand side kind of puts a bit of um uh, weight to the image uh but the only thing is because I framed it this way, uh, that the border on it I've put around it is kind of coming into it, and it's almost like um, taking away. It's not giving it breathing room, as we we're talking about earlier with uh, David's image when he said, "Do I keep the? Uh, do I actually put, leave the image where the the trees cut off, or do I leave the breathing room?" Same applies to this type of thing here. Um, so in the original image, there's a bit maybe about half an inch uh, more next to the uh, of course the the. The, the dead wood there you can see on the right hand side in the mm. corner so that that's a, a no no with regards to the border on it so so it's not really giving the justice um and yeah of course the you can see it's a very messy uh, background there uh, there's a lot of uh, sort of trees um sort of saplings trees there young trees uh broken trees weeds etc uh it was pretty much telling a story of it depicts winter more and uh, that's what I was looking to achieve with this image. Have you got a fairly wide aperture there, though, as well? Though? Uh, well, the the lens is two point eight aperture. I think I had it four point five actually, right. and I stacked it. Yeah, 
4.5. So I kind of what I try to do is focus on the the uh, immediate trees, mm -hmm. and then the, the other trees you can see in the distance here. I just let that drop off. I didn't focus on the background. I uh, think it works very well, Paul. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank I, I think it's sort of like you strength the um the the trunk uh, the tree trunks either side and then the fallen tree going through it yeah, um, and, yeah. The, and the, the um you say the chaotic trees at the back but they're just sort of like they give a nice texture yeah it's a it's, it's a texture aspect sense. of light yeah. gives um and they're not a, there's no ones um dominating any of the others so they i think they just give a lovely background soft background to the strong foreground okay. And I'm I'm not I'm not a a woodland photographer photographer, but I think I might start wandering out into the woods and seeing what <laughs> I can do in the future. <laughs> As I do of uh, going down to the beach and taking pictures, I've been uh, obviously with uh, Shona Perkins we had on the week all week there, and yourself. Um, that's given me food to, for thought. Thank you guys. Really appreciate the feedback on that. Um, yeah, sorry about the uh, the picture quality though. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, what so, I like about it, just quickly, Paul. What I like about it is the uh -huh. uh, on the third line, the left third line. You've got that little uh, smaller tree in the in the mid background. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's got a little bit more light falling on it, and that's uh, that's mm -hmm. a focal point for me. Uh, is that tree? It's just uh, I, if, if I if it was mine, I'd play around with either luminosity or selecting that green yeah. uh, as a come, and then just very very subtly see if you can pull that green out a bit more that just might make it pop a bit more but that's that's yeah. just what i would look at as a person yeah, that's very process. very subtly image uh, the image has been very subtly um uh played about with the the tones uh, i've not really done much to it at all uh I've, I've tried to keep the 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 kind of um not mundane look that's not the word i'm looking for but the the average that the kind of just the the textures of the the actual picture itself you're looking at the, it's more about the textures um yeah and the, the, the media what i want to highlight most was the the fallen tree oh. and uh, of course yeah, if you look record. at the sides of the yeah. tree there um i've kind of i've brightened up a little bit um yeah. yeah but there's that kind of thing i do i'm not confident when it comes to so when i post process i tend to think too, if I think it's too much, I'll back off again. And sometimes I doubt myself, and I'll back off a bit more. Um, yeah. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, it's just a thing with me. It's a fear thing I've got. I think that's the when you you know you do your processing. If you've had any doubts, leave it and come back, and then decide if it's any good or not. No. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did do yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've never put that image up in the um, the video. But the reason for that because I I didn't show the footage. Uh, <laughs> I just I wanted to actually get get some time to myself and take some images, and I find when I do that that I get more creative. Uh, yes. Although I'm, I will get a bit better, hopefully. <laughs> so thank you guys, and thanks for the feedback as well. Thank you, thank you. So um, that was the last image. Uh, take that off there. Back to our faces again. And guys, thanks for <laughs> sticking along. This if you made it this far into the podcast, uh, we'll consider giving you a free gift. Tell you what we'll do, it'll be better, bro. We'll show you a good clip of something. Hi, Steve. Is that me? Is that... <laughs> it's you, Steve, yeah. <laughs> I've got so, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, guys, I'm just going to do a little introduction. So, guys, um, we did say we're going to show you something, and uh, I'm going to hand you over to Steve, Steve Stain. He's going to tell you more about his video, and, of course, he's going to show you something a bit kind of... Well, let's just say look, it's worthwhile just getting to this part of the uh, the YouTube the YouTube video tonight and to watch this. So, Steve, take it away. So, things are a little bit. I can move up. I'll do that again. <laughs> Should have bought my skates. Should have bought my skates. Anyway, hey, that in my next video, there's more dancing. <laughs> Sorry, not there's myself. more dancing. There's more dancing in the next video, but not by myself. So it's yeah, well worth watch. Great. <laughs> um, so, well, guys, stay tuned and watch uh, Steve's videos. Of course, you'll always see someone dancing. You may get some um, some techniques and you can try yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and occasionally... Are you, you do some in your workshops? You can put in your workshops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's part of the workshop. Yeah. Hey, brilliant. Half an okay. hour dancing session. Right. Then, then right. we'll go through camera settings. 
And what I'm going to do as well is some juncture through doing these podcasts. Um, we've mentioned about Doug. You know, Doug has got a YouTube channel, but Doug's not doing YouTube just now. He's focusing more on his uh, books, uh, doing his walking tour books, etc. But Doug's got a catchphrase, and I've kind of mentioned about one, two, three, click. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if I can... Hmm. Doug, at some point, if you like, if you want to take control of the screen, would you like to share that? I don't have access to the files at the moment, unfortunately. No, that's, I was just going to say you can actually share it for YouTube, but no. So Doug's got like a famous catchphrase. Doug, tell us more about their catchphrase. If everyone doesn't know about it, and of course. Yeah, it's, well, I only started saying it because I use a two-second timer, basically. It was filling in the gap between pressing the button and waiting for something, for something to happen, you know, so... Yeah. Uh, that was it. So you press the button and go, you'd hear it beep, 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 one, two, three, click. And that was yeah. that. Yeah, so your son does the music for your video as well, aren't you? Yeah. So that's, that's quite good. Uh, I was going to ask one more question, and it's just mainly just um, getting to be photography itself. And one of the things we always ask if, if you guys would be happy to come back on again, Sue and David, of course. I would love to come back on again. It's been really, wait, been really wait. good fun. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. And thank you. And thank you for showing your images as well. And David, uh, I know you'll have to get up early in the morning. Uh, you have to, to make us. And then this, this is part of fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, so if, I'd be happy if, uh, if 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 you wanted me back, that would be fine. But uh, I'm sure you've got plenty of others. Oh, yeah, this. we do have a good lineup, but we, you know, we can set up and get people onto the, the panel um, as opposed to just being interviewed. So we can just get you guys along uh, while we interview all the people as well. Um, well, okay, so one of the questions I'm going to ask, and this is one of these questions that, if questions, if you ever present, if you ever, this ever happened to you. So, you've got one lens, you've got one camera body, one tripod, and you're going out to shoot your favourite image, but what lens? What camera body? What location? Of course, what tripod as well? I didn't mention tripod. So, I'm going to go to Doug first. Ooh, Sorry, Doug. No I don't know. <laughs> <No pressure. laughs> um, so if you could choose I mean, any would... lens in the world, any tripod, any camera body, um, past or present. Past yeah. or present. Well, so it's vintage photography or mm, that kind of thing. Mm. Do you know? I think I mentioned this in our very first podcast, but I still have a soft spot for my very, very first camera. Okay. Which was my wee Sony A5000, which I still have it here. Would that tiny. be the camera? Fit, fit it would the that be the camera you would use of? Tiny, yeah. Yeah. Would you use that camera on your favourite location, like, you know, I would. shooting? I would, and yeah. I have. Okay. Yeah. It's not a bad wee camera. And yeah, if yeah. you're doing hills, you know, it's light as a feather. And what lens is it? Is it like inter interchangeable lenses on it? Or interchangeable it lenses, fixed? yes. I mean, that's the same lens as my current camera takes. Oh, yeah. You know? Is that a um, 50? That one's a 16 to 50, but I would actually use I've got a better lens on my other camera, which is a 16 to 70 uh, G Master. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Which Sorry. is a lovely lens, and I would fit that on this. Uh, yeah. 20 megapixels, so it's not bad shots, you know. Yeah, dynamic range is fantastically great, but you can uh, bracket it, which yeah. again works, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, um, um, so, okay. yeah, so, uh, location, yeah, I don't where it. I would go, probably Glencoe. And take some yeah, back. sorry, I did, I did mention that location. Yeah. Um, so tripod, oh, what, just, um, well, what's your, what's your favorite? What, what's the, the tripod that you? You may have it, I don't know, but what, what I, tripod well, do you use, what I'm, manufacturer? I'm not massively into tripods as a thing. As long as it holds the camera steady, then that's all I need. So you, you're not, you don't really matter what type of tripod brand or anything? Okay. Precisely. No. I mean, I, I own, I've gone through several tripods in my time. I've got two three-legged things just now. Yeah, they are quite good, actually. Which yeah. are very good. I, I, I really enjoy using them. I want to get, I've got the ball head just now, I want to get a geared head. In the, the very yeah, I can movies. see the hand on heart. They, yeah. They're really good, especially I've, for woodland photography. They slow you right down. Yeah, I've bought myself. I've got a longer lens, which is a, a seventy to four hundred. I think it is. 
Oh, yeah. Nice. And uh, using that on the ball head, you know, you get your picture lined up, then as soon as you move your hand, it, goes, it droops. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, uh, Have you got like um, an L bracket? Really for your Sorry, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, I can't, I don't know what I'll do with all that, to be fair. Oh, yeah. Easy concept and such an effective thing to have. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, Sue, what about yourself? What um, lens we use, what camera body, which tripods, and which location? I've got a Canon R5, and I tend to go out mostly with my 100 to 500 lens and would that be your go-to thing would if you had to all the choice in every you know camera manufacturer uh camera excessive example like uh you know a tripod and lens to shoot your favorite location would you stick what you've got just now or would you change it to something more i would stick to that i think mainly yeah, well because it's my go-to at the moment i mean next month i might change my mind but i think the last year or two that that tends to be it is heavy to carry around i will say and i would also add to that my filters and i very rarely take my uh, tripod out these days and i'm desperately trying to remember the make of it it's, it's a nice one but i do have an arca swiss um geared head which is really good and i've had it a long yeah. time they are good they are very good um david what would you use so as okay you've well, got every would... anything you're, you're disposable if it's full frame if it's can you, uh, see, large... can you see this camera is it coming up on screen sorry yeah so um seven Sony a992 full frame um oh yeah yeah i would that it's got a, it's got the 70 to 70 on it now which is my go-to yes. but i'm thinking i would um chuck this on it which is a tamron 70 to 300 it's a bit yeah. heavy uh, so to compensate that weight because you know i'm an old fella um, and I'm going to be walking up what I call Bill's Hill, which is uh, on a property about 15 uh -huh. minutes drive to go to. And uh, Bill's Hill, he calls it Rocky Hill. It's a it's a granite <laughs> hill that he's fenced off so cattle don't get in there. And he's keeping it as natural as he can with craggy old gum trees that struggle to survive okay. because of the, you know, they're putting roots down into thin cracks and trying to get as much nutrient, which is bugger all. Um, so the trees reflect that, and uh, if I go at the right time of the year, I'll get some wildflowers. So I would um, you use the 70 to 300, and I reckon I can have a go at the wildflowers. I can also then use its reach uh, to look through the tree canopy onto the valley below, which actually overlooks the town I live in. Um, so I would that's what I would do, and I would take, which I was trying to find, but I can't lay my hands on it. I've got a little lightweight graphite uh, uh, tripod, mm -hmm. uh, and I'd lug that up the hill rather than my normal heavier stool graphite, but it's much yeah. heavier. Uh, yeah. And I would lug that up. And uh, I often go up without a tripod, and I say, and I've got to try and get myself as steady and uh, to try and take a shot. And when you're an old bloke like me, you... Um, you know, I try and find a rock that I can sit on. Yeah, <laughs> keep my yeah. in and all that. So if I, I I went up with a mate for his first time, and he had a, he had his lightweight tripod, and I thought, hmm, if I've got one of those, I should take I should take it up the hill, and so that's what I do. Good, yeah. One thing that's come across so far uh, for go to Steve is everyone is very loyal to their own camera gear, <laughs> and why not? Um, Steve, what about yourself? You had the choice of any brand of camera any model up to date past present or tripods what location would you travel to as well if or even stay at local what would you what would you go for in all these aspects well, lo um location would be the Ogwin valley i mm -hmm. absolutely love the Ogwin valley um it's got so much to shoot within within walking distance you don't have to walk up or hike up a mountain to get some fantastic shots. Yeah. Um, as for the camera, I, honestly, I'd have any. I'd have any camera. I would. I'd have mm -hmm. the one I've got now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, as long as I can control it, that's all I'm happy with. Lens. If you'd have asked me probably a year ago, I would have gone for a, a twenty-four seventy. Mm -hmm. Now I'd probably take my seventy to three hundred um, Sony lens. And, yeah. Um, one of the reasons why that would be is is really the gear head because i shoot i've got a gear head and 
like Doug was saying, he struggles with um, the ball lead, you know, with a long lens. And having used a gear head now for the last 18 months or so, it's made me use the the longer lens more. Um, yes. And yeah. you're in so much control with that gear head. It's, it's just fantastic. So... Uh, and obviously the Ogwin Valley, you'll probably need a longer lens anyway. But if I if I struggled and wanted a, a wider um, field of view, I'd just pano it. Mm, yeah. So I so yeah. I'd just I'd use the equipment I've got and, and get the best image from it. But so that's why I choose the longer lens rather than the 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 wider angle. Yeah. Um, tripod. I've got about twelve. Tripods. Yeah, we've seen um, the reviews I'm, you do on your yeah, channel. I'm, I'm fortunate to be sent tripods, and yes. um, I just review them and things like that. So I've got a heavy duty tripod, which is a uh, inaural, I think it is. Um, it, it's a real sturdy tripod. That's the one that'd be my first choice if I didn't have to carry it up a mountain. Then I've got an in between tripod, which is a KNF tripod, which they sent me three or four months ago, which is an it's an excellent tripod, mid-range, yeah. you know, sort of. And then I've got a super lightweight new tripod that came out um, about two weeks ago, actually, uh, which nice. I've reviewed, which is a travel tripod. But it's Yeah, I've seen best. that one of your um, yeah, it's a two super, videos ago. Yeah, yeah, it's a super, super tripod. with a, It's actually got its own, it's a ball-head type thing on it. Um, uh and it's so well designed and got some fantastic features on. The yeah. only downside to it would be it's quite pricey at the moment. But why, whether that's because it's only just come out, I don't know. But that's from Freewell, who don't normally nice. do tripods. They do the filters. And uh, yeah, that's some good, uh, that's a fair collection of tripods you've got as oh, well. I've got tripods everywhere. <laughs> tripods everywhere. Anyone, anyone need a tripod? Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys it's been great tonight uh just want to finish off a few things and uh Matt, first can I you part of where we just on yep. the subject i'll show you my new camera do you want to see my new camera oh yeah doug you know what i'm going to see that i want to see it. you did talk about that yeah go what yeah. kind of camera is it i'm interested yeah here we go <laughs> did you make of that <laughs> it's a bag of bricks is, is that the new nickel <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nick on. Nick on. <laughs> that's a lovely, lovely camera, and it's you know, it loads up and everything. You've got your wee film in there. Oops, oh, yeah, it just fell out. Yeah, yeah. spare <laughs> film comes with it. That's some pictures of the camera. These negatives, oh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's you, know. <laughs> you know what? So, um, Julian Baird reviewed it the other day there, and I thought I want one then, so I got it. Yeah, and the viewfinder yeah, yeah. even works. <laughs> yeah, um, bolt with bricks, I suppose, isn't it? Filter bricks. <laughs> Anybody can top that? that with a camera. <laughs> I've copied that one. Maybe I've got a camera made of origami in all camera. <laughs> yeah. That's a challenge it. for next thing. <laughs> <Yeah. Still. laughs> so, guys, it's been a great uh, podcast tonight. Thanks for staying a little bit longer as well. Uh, we tend to go over this whole tradition. We do it all the time. Uh, but it gives us a chance to catch up and talk to each other since we've been looking at images all night and what images we have been looking at, haven't we? We've been some crackers, um, really some uh, beautiful uh, images from everyone tonight. Um, and thank you. And of course, we will uh, put some of these images up from all of us onto the group. And of course, um, if you want to look at uh, more of the work of the images you see, we'll put a link to everyone's website, of course, on that on their socials, of course. Um, Sue? Thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, what are you up to next week? Uh, are you doing anything, any, any workshops or anything? No, it all depends on the weather. I'd like, I really want to get out and do some springtime shooting. So I'm hoping that it's going to be good. Good, good. I hope it goes well for you as well. And we would like to see more of your work in the group as well, if you can post on them. I shall um, post. Yeah, thank you. And David, uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, so early, enjoy your coffee in the morning and your porridge, whatever you're having. So tell us what you're going to be up to the next week. Uh, next week, um, probably I'll be doing some photography photography for myself. Um, I've also got a head off 
uh, in first week of March, I'm going to Warrnambool, which is uh, a, on the coast of Victoria. Um, mm -hmm. I've got to, uh, I'm going by train because I love that and I can spend some time in Melbourne and do yeah. some street stuff before I catch the next train. And I'll head in a westerly direction uh, along, right along the coast. And there's, and uh, Sue's images. I'm going to ask the fellas down at the Warrnambool Camera Club because I'm judging down there. Uh, can they take me to where there's some uh, offshore wind and I can get some of those? <laughs> <shots>? <laughs> Do what they tell me. So looking right. forward to that. <laughs> good, oh, good. Great, yeah. And I'm thank jealous. you as well. I'm jealous. I'd love to go to Australia and take some big waves. Yeah, especially when you were talking about the whale. And it was, oh, you know, Steve welcome. just yeah. Steve was just talking about the whale in the UK and then it cut right over right over to David talking about how great the whale was where he was. It just kind of yeah, well, we'll get, move quickly to Doug. Uh, Doug, so what are you up to next week there? <laughs> I don't really know. Probably walking, depending on the weather. So you do working more in your book, getting some images work, on work your book, on the book, Yes, get some pictures for that. And if I'm not doing that, then I'll be actually writing it. Just depends yeah. if the rain's on or if it's really windy, then I'll sit inside and get something done here instead. Nice. But it yeah. depends. Photography may or may not happen. We'll see. <laughs> okay, okay. Hopefully it does. Um, Steve? Of course, um, you'll be. I know you're a busy man. Just tell us what you'll be doing. What's your layout? What videos coming up? People can watch, etc. I've got. I've got the video that was the other image in that's coming out with some more dancing, obviously. You know, so <laughs> please watch that. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so is it the um, the funky chicken or is it uh, the? No, no. Um, this this the saucer? it's more. It's it's actually a waltz. This one. It's a waltz. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a waltz. So who's with you? Is there yeah, someone yeah. with you? You don't have to tell us who it is, but ah, is well, you'll have to watch the video to find out. Well, Dean, back. <laughs> uh, okay, um, guys, uh, thank you for uh, coming on tonight, and uh, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. And guys, everyone watching, thanks for watching and investing your time. And you've made this long, as we say, you know, you deserve a medal, guys. Uh, we've got uh, Tom Peters up next week, uh, so stay tuned. Come and watch us on that. And uh, yeah, Tom is a woodland photographer. Also, he does a bit of seascape as well. Uh, I have interviewed him before uh, in a past podcast. But Tom's coming on again. He agreed to come on to Landscape Lenscast. Heaven knows why, but he's coming on again. Uh, so we'll be talking to Tom next again Friday. And till then, have a good week of photography. Keep clicking away. And guys, thanks again for joining uh, the podcast. And have a good week as well and your photography. Take care of yourself.